How's it going guys? I'm Chris Rohde from National RV Detroit in Belleville, Michigan. I'm going to do a walk around on this uh, micro light flag tag, which is uh, pretty cool. For a lightweight camper, they did really well with the camper. It's a uh, 21 FBS, so uh, front bedroom slide, okay? That's what the FBS is for, so it's a 21 FBS. Pretty cool micro light uh, flag tag. It's got a window in the front, which I think is really cool. Um, and this, so the, the switch for this LED light strip is on the off door side, right on the front. So they put a waterproof uh, light switch for that LED light strip on the front right here. So off, on. So just remember that you got that there. Um, you got double battery box. So you're going to have two 12 volt batteries, or place for two 12 volt batteries underneath here on this double uh, 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 battery box. You got two 30 propane tanks. Um, I'm gonna show you in this video. So I, most regulators don't have a way to tell, hey, do I have propane? How much propane do I have? Is one bottle out? Is, are both bottles out? So what they kind of did is, do you have propane or don't you have propane, right? So when it's green, it means you have LP. It just don't tell you how much LP you have. If it's red, it means there is no LP going through the regulator. So if this goes red, that means your bottles are empty, right? So you have uh, um, two bottles, and that's your regulator. No big deal. Um, electric tongue jack. This one's a little bit more fancy. LED light. And then you're up and down. Um, where this is going to come in handy is getting it on and off your truck. Instead of having to crank it all the way up and crank it down. So this is a big deal that they do this for you. If you run out of 12 volt battery power because this runs on 12 volt, does have a manual override. There's a little uh, ramp that comes out, and I don't know if the camera will get that, but inside there you put a tool on there and you can crank the jack up or down. I'll come back and put that in. Um, you got your saddle brackets on there for your hitch equipment. We'll go over that with you when you come in. Move into the door side. You got uh, they they actually do some pretty cool stuff. I'm impressed with a lot of stuff that they do. Um, you got your slam baggage doors right here. So you got the doors that you can with the magnet. They make it lightweight for you. You got a solar panel prep right here. So if you want to plug in a solar panel, um, this has the GoPro uh, solar panel system versus the Furion system. So I'm not gonna say if one's better than the other one because. Let's be honest, they're both really expensive depending on the level of solar panel that you buy. Um, but these, So just remember that it is the same as the Furion plug-in, but it's the GoPro, so they, they plug in the same. Um, this also has a one command system in it, which I'll go over on the inside a little bit. You can scan with your phone and it'll give you information about how to use the one control system. So you can put your awning out with your phone, turn your lights on, um, move your slide out with your phone versus using the buttons and I'll show you that when we get inside um, and then there's going to be a pre-wired solar panel command system where you can install the GoPro full system if you want to if you want to upgrade to it um, they put your jack handles with magnets in the front pretty cool versus little uh, cheesy velcro straps so that's really nice that they do that for you so you can lower uh, the one is for your uh, tongue jack the one on the uh, bottom is for your tongue jack. This is to manually bring your tongue jack in and out. And it's with the magnet. And then this one is for your stabilizers. And remember, I say this in all my videos, that they're stabilizers. They're not levelers. So they're not going to level your RV. They're going to stabilize it to stop movement in it left to right, front to back. Um, but I always recommend you get a, a cordless drill and a socket so that way you can zip them down and zip them up a lot quicker when it's raining on. It's always raining on Sunday when you're going home. Um, you got a, a front table. It's in your front storage compartment. It's right here. That's the legs for it. This is an outside table. Oh, or a second inside table if you want to use it, but this table comes out and you can set it outside underneath your awning. Um, and this is your hitch equipment we'll put together for you when you uh, come inside, or when you come in, we'll set it up for you. You got your electric Lippert awning, goes out eight feet. Um, in all my videos, I tell everybody that uh, 
you always want to take it in when the weather picks up. Uh, number one killer of an R RV awning is wind. It, when you tighten these, uh, uh, the inside arms, if you were to tighten them and a gust of wind would get underneath here, it would be like a parachute and it would rip the awning up, okay? It's designed to absorb the weather as it comes, right? So if you leave it the way it is from the factory, you'll be in good shape. When a gallon of water builds up on top of the awning, and it'll dump it for you. Just don't be standing there or you'll get soaked. If you do want to pitch it or set it and you want to tighten it up, you can tighten up these Allen heads on the inside of either arm and set it for pitch if you want to do that. But to bring it in, you have to make sure that you uh, release the Allen head or it could bend the arm when you go to bring it in with the uh, button. You have a, uh, comes with a portable grill and a table that's in the inside where it latches onto here. So that's on the inside on your couch. And some of the parts are in a, uh, a bag for you. And I'll kind of go through that a little bit when we get on the other side. Um, you got your LP connection for your grill. If you're gonna, these, these, this connection is for the front bottles, right? So you, can, you don't have to bring extra propane bottle with you or hook up to a propane. Um, you can run off the bottles on the front. So this is your connection, quick connect. And then this is the on and off button for the gas. You have uh, uh, your TV inside has the same bracket on the wall, so you can slide your TV on the outside. So if you want to slide it off that bracket, slide it on this one. You have outside television, and then this is for uh, satellite or cable. And then you got some outlets to plug your TV in or DVD player or whatever. Um, outside speakers. You got your exhaust for your furnace. Uh, another real cool thing Flagstaff is doing, especially in Michigan, right? Our roads suck. They're really bad. So uh, they give you uh, the TST um, uh, monitoring system monitoring system for your uh, valve stems. So it tells you how many, uh, how hot and cold your tires are and what your PSI is. So the, uh, let me grab it real quick. So they give you the TST kit, you just have to pair the valve stems with the screen and this screen is colored, it goes inside your uh, vehicle and it'll tell you what the temperature of your tires is on one side and what the uh, PSI pressure of your tires are on the other side. And you can buy extra uh, uh, TST valve stems for your vehicle, so if you want to have your vehicles and your what you're towing. I think you can put up to 18 valve stems on this on this system, um, if I'm if I remember correctly. So it's pretty cool that they give it to you uh, with the stand um, and the suction cup. So on your valve stems, if uh, you come in a little closer, it'll have the low pressure sim symbol with the yellow on the end of it. That's indicating that they are uh, valve stems for the TST uh, system. So you just have to pre um, pair them to your screen. And you can always go online and look it up, but it's pretty cool that they give it to you, so that way you know if you have a blowout. Um, exhaust vent for your uh, stove and oven. On this one, you're going to have to lift up on these two little tabs to release the, the flapper. And then you can lock it back in. Outside marine grade uh, speakers, for uh, outside speakers for your radio. Your low, I don't want to forget about your low point drains. So on this one, it's oh, I, right here, right directly underneath the fender. So you're going to have to go right up. These two gray uh, caps you see, one is hot, one is cold. That'll be more convenient for winterizing it or summerizing it. Those are your lowest point of your uh, water lines. Um, so they do it twofold on this. They give you a catch for your door. So if you want to lock the door open, you can. But they also put that 30 mile an hour friction hinge in the door, so it'll take a 30 mile an hour gust of wind, so it's not slamming into your RV. Um, but remember, if you do the catch, I don't think the steps will go all the way up. Yeah, so you have to make sure that the catch is off and that the door is flush with the RV before you put your steps away. 
So you want to make sure that the uh, door is all the way open and then uh, retract step legs before closing entry door. So it looks like if these legs are telescoped out, it's going to hit the door. So they want you to put the, the legs down with these fancy little buttons before you uh, shut your door or they will hit. So then once those are down, you can shut the door and then lift up on your grab handle. Nice. And the light switch for this outside step light is pretty cool. They give you an indicator light on the outside for your step is inside. And I'll show you where that's at when we go inside. So uh, to pull out your steps, just remember you're going to push this in. And then you can always uh, indicate where they're at. I do it by the train. So you pull this blue lever, make sure the door's all the way open. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure that this threshold is flush. So once that's down there like that, you can hit this lever and then that'll telescope your legs out real nice so that you can shut your door. Because if the legs are too far out, it'll lift up like this and you can damage your door or your door won't shut at all if they're too high. So you always want to make sure that the legs are at a right height so that the door will shut properly. So if you're, those tires in that side are in a hole, it'll throw the steps off. So you're going to adjust the steps so that you can shut the door, okay? Um, outside, you got a ladder, so you can get up there and inspect your roof seals three times a year, three to four times a year, depending. Uh, you should at least get up there three times a year and check your caulking. It, it's really important. They do a good job uh, uh, laminating their coach all the way around, um, but you want to get up there and check the caulking on your roof so that you don't get water leaks. Ladder holds 300 pounds on the ladder. You have uh, pre-wired for Furion backup camera from the factory. They installed a hitch on the back of here, okay? So you always remember, if the hitch has uh, dog ears in it or hooks, it's for towing. If it doesn't have the dog ears in it or the hooks, the holes, it's not for towing. So this is just for a bike rack. So you can slide in a bike rack makes it a lot easier and it's reinforced so you're not putting on a bumper bike rack um, so they reinforce this hitch so you can put a, a rack on the back you can put a bike rack in there so really cool that they get they give you this from the factory um, and it's rated for 300 pounds so remember you don't want to exceed with your bikes 300 pounds of the bumper all right access panel to the back of your refrigerator um, just a little tip a lot of people you get uh, um, go get some flea collars, okay, like for a cat or for a dog, and lay the flea collars in the inside of here, and it'll keep the bugs from getting inside here and making a home. Just lay it on the inside. Moving around to the off-door side. So the way I always like to explain this portion of it is like you're, uh, I got a full hookup campsite. In one of my videos, I'll do a, uh, uh, uh like a boondocking version of it, but for now, like you got a full hookup, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get to the campground, you got your 30 amp marine grade power cord, you're gonna hook that in right here and plug it into 30 amps if the campground's offering it. And always be uh, conscious, if you're gonna break it down to 15 amps, that you adjust your appliances accordingly, right? On how much you're running at, at one time. So plug in 30 amps, you're gonna get your dump holes, you're gonna hook your dump holes right up here, and then you're gonna make sure your valves are shut, hook up your dump hose, hook it to your full dump hookup, right? And then you're gonna pull your gray. Pull your gray water, that one can run. Leave your black water shut. Go inside your camper. Um, I always like to say keep an old milk jug around and then you wanna take two gallons of water, make, dump it down the toilet, put your toilet chemical down there and let it sit. So, one of two things happen, right? Either you fill your black water tank up and use it, or you're going home. You never want to let your black water just run. You want to leave the chemical in the tank, breaking down the waste. Um, that's the safest way, cleanest, easiest way to keep your black water tank in great shape, okay? So getting back to what I was saying, you're gonna uh, put your toilet chemical back down the toilet, put the two gallons of water down the toilet with the chemical, leave it shut. You got your gray water open, it's flowing, that's good, that's just dirty water. That's just water that's going down your sink and shower. That's safe, just let it run out. 
if you got full hookup site. You're going to hook up to your city water connection, okay? You're going to take your hose and you're going to hook it up to your city water, all right, which is on the left. It's very important because on the right is your black water tank flush. So you're going to hook your hose up to here and you got constant pressure to your sink, shower, and toilet, okay? Now you're ready, you're camping, right? So now you got there on Monday, you're set up. It's Sunday, you're going home, right? You're ready to, you're done camping. So you got your gray water's been running, your black water tank is full, you're ready to empty it, okay? And you're, and you're closing up to go home. So you're gonna unhook from your city water, okay? You're gonna open your black water tank valve. You're gonna hook your city water to your black water tank flush, and it's gonna power wash the inside of your black water tank while you're dumping, okay? So if you hook to this with that shut, it'll fill your camper forward. It'll fill it up, all right? So you don't wanna do that. So you wanna make sure that your black water tank is open and you got your, uh, your hook to here, power washing it while you're dumping. I always tell people to try to get a clear neck because if it's got a clear neck on it, you'll see it go from dirty to clean while you're dumping it. So that, that's important so you know you're done and that's clean, okay? And then always make sure you put your cap back on. Shut your valve and put your cap back on. A lot of people stole their uh, dump tape in the bumper. You can take your dump hose and then put it right in the bumper there. So, black water tank flush, right? City water connection, and then you're going to have uh, satellite and cable hookups. And I'll go over this more if you have any questions about the black water tank flush. Uh, winterizing it they got it hooked up to here you can hook a hose up here and then it'll you can put a, a line into a antifreeze jug and suck the antifreeze out of the line out of the jug and into your lines from here from the stocking center and then you have your outside shower i always tell people make sure that you uh, winterize this and you summarize it it's got antifreeze in it right now they give you this little clip right here that comes off if you want to pop this off and there's two holes in it. I don't recommend you securing it, but that's what it's for. This pops off, and it's got two holes in it, so you can hold the head up. I wouldn't do it, but it, they give it to you. I mean, it's on an angle on this side, but it, it comes off the door. I, I left the slide out in for this reason, so you can see the slide topper we installed that's on there. I um, mean, it makes it easier to get to this side uh, stuff when you're dumping or hooking up. It's easier with the slide in than, than out. Um, you got your freshwater tank drain when you're emptying your fresh water. So you got your freshwater tank fill. So just recapping a little bit. If you're going to fill up here if you're using your water pump. If you're not going to use your water pump and you're hooked to city water, you're going to be hooked up there. So you won't be filling up this at all if you're using city water. If you're going to use your water pump, like if you're in a parking lot and you want to take a shower or use your toilet or wash your hands, um, you'll fill this up. You'll take the hose laid inside here. That'll fill up your freshwater tank onboard water that you bring with you or if you're boondocking. And then to drain that water, they give you a three inch dump valve. Very cool. Most manufacturers don't give you this. So I like it. It's got this white handle. Just give her a pull and then you get a three inch dump. You can buy a cap for it, it's not necessary, but if you want to, you can. But you just have to pull this out, and uh, we leave it out when it's winterized so that we know it's empty and it's winterized. You can shut it if you want to, but that just dumps all the fresh water out. Very, very convenient. Very nice. Uh, this is your hot water tank. Um, the buttons for this one, you're going to have two electric buttons, okay? One on the inside, one on the outside. So you're going to have a hot water tank for gas and hot water for electric on the inside, okay? Now here's the tricky part which confuses a lot of folks. So from the factory they put this little gray tape over the button so that they're indicating that it's off so that it doesn't burn out the heating element. Okay, it's really important that this stays in the off position when the tank is empty, when you're not using it. Every time you plug in, if this button is in the on position, the heating element will be on. So you want to make sure that's in the off position when you're not using it and when the tank is empty or it'll burn out the heating element, okay? Uh, pressure release valve, that releases the pressure inside the tank. 
before you remove the plug. It's one and one sixteenth is the, the size um, to remove this. Uh, it's got an anal rod connected to the end of it. So um, you want to replace that once a year. It prevents the, the hot water tank from rusting inside out. Okay, so you, uh, usually we pull the plug out and lay it on the inside. If you have a 110 issue where it's not lighting or it's working on electric, um, you, you have to uh, re hit these resets. These will deploy out and you'll reset by hitting these two buttons right here, okay? So recapping, on and off switch for the heating element for the electric portion of it, but you're gonna turn this on here and then you're gonna go inside and turn on the on button for the electric portion. You have two buttons for that on this coach. So I'll show you that on the board on the inside, okay? Fresh water fill. And then I'll do this real quick. So on, on this side, this paneling comes off that I'm pushing on right here. That gets you access to the back of your hot water tank and your bypass valves and you're going to have a freshwater tank filter okay we're not freshwater tank filter freshwater filter right so that if you want water so this is the key it's on the back side of here this slips up over the filter this loosens it and tightens it and this is the filter that goes inside the housing that this opens okay and that's on the other side of this panel and then you have uh, some more stuff like I said for your grill some fancy stuff and then your grill hookup, your quick connect for your grill, and some cables for uh, an extra battery. And then this is a 15 amp, 30 to 15 amp reducer. So if you want to plug in at home, we give you that. Again, it's a micro light by Flagstaff Horse River. It's a 21 FBRS. on over here with me so remember I was talking about that one command or one control or on command um, this is it so you're gonna take your phone you're gonna scan this little code right here and it's gonna lead you to either for your Apple or for a Android phone for Google Play and it'll download the app to move your awning in and out move your slide out in and out and turn your lights on pretty cool so use this, this is a really fancy deal if you're into technology, it's really cool that they offer that for this coach. Um, awning, bring your awning in, and then obviously take your awning out. This, remember I was talking about that button for your hot water tank, so that's why I wanted to get right to it. So see where it says, I like that they label it, heater electric. So you, if you turn this on and it's off outside, it's not gonna be on. So remember that, you have to physically go outside turn the on button for the electric portion of the hot water heater. Let's say you don't want the electric portion, you want it on gas. You're gonna have a DSI fault light for that. So you're gonna turn that on, red light's gonna come on. Red light goes off, red light stays off, it means it lit on electric. If you ever see a red indicator light right here, that means your hot water tank did not light, okay? So in this case, you can run it on both elements, get 20 gallons of hot water recovery per hour, running it on electric and gas. If you want to run it just on gas, you'll have that one on and you'll get 11.2 uh, gallons of water per hour. If you run it just on electric, you're going to get 6.5 gallons per hour running that on electric. But remember that you have to have this one on and the button outside on for it to work on electric. It's like a double safety so that you don't burn your heating element out when that tank is empty. Because if you leave it on out there and this is off, you're in good shape if you, your tank is empty. So it's kind of like a double uh, double thing. So bouncing back and forth, that's your hot water on gas, that's your tank heaters, 
and electric hot water tank. So the light comes on, then the light will go off. Sorry, just recapping. Once it goes off, it's lit. The tank is empty, so I don't want to run it for a long time, but just show you that it's going to go off, and then it'll stay off. So if this light stays on, and this comes on, it did not light. But because it's empty, I don't want to run it, so I'm going to shut it off to be safe. So this is your hot water tank on gas, hot water tank on electric, that um, 21 gallons per hour running on both elements. You get 11.2 gallons and 6.2 if you just run it on electric or gas for your hot water tank and then this one all the way to the right is for your electric tank heaters so those are pads on your tanks that heat your tanks if you're going to use it in the winter time all right water pump button that turns on your water pump if you're going to pump water from your uh fresh water holding tank to your sink shower and toilet that's this guy right here and then this tells you how full your battery is it says empty a third two thirds and full so this lets you know that your fresh water tank is empty, your black water tank, empty, gray water tank, empty. And then you got your interior lights, porch light, which is outside, your LED light strip that's in your awning tube that turns it on and off. And then that little fancy step light that I showed you in the video in the beginning, this turns that on and off, okay? And that's uh, this panel right here, pretty cool. Uh, moving on to your refrigerator, it's a Dometic uh, refrigerator. pretty fancy if you ask me you always want to put it on auto okay so your refrigerator runs on gas and it runs on electric we're plugged in remember I told you we plug in to 30 amps we're plugged in so right now when it's on auto it's running off electric if I were to go out there and unplug it it would automatically switch over to gas as long as you leave it on auto if you switch it over to gas and that auto lights not lit up it's running on just gas till it runs out so it'll drain your propane tank down until you run out, regardless if you're plugged in or not. So you always want to leave it on auto. If uh, you get that yellow light on the check, it means your refrigerator didn't light for some reason. Either you're not plugged in, or your propane's off, or you're out of propane. Okay? So always leave it on auto. And then you got your on and off button. And then, on the inside, of your refrigerator these are your fins right here and this is your thermostat okay and it gives you a warmer to colder so this would be warmest to coldest so let's say your refrigerator is getting too cold and it's freezing your milk you're gonna move it down fins and it's only gonna cool to this point so now it's, it's only cooling to this fin and, th and then that's it so if, let's say it's not getting cold enough you're gonna move it all the way down this would be your 1 to 10 so this would be your coldest position, and then uh, go from there. So that's how you turn your refrigerator up or down. There's no buttons or thermostat to turn it up or down, but that's how you do it. Just under the refrigerator, to the right of it, since we're, uh, I'm gonna talk about it, it's your safety devices, that's your LP detector, that detects LP gas. Um, you got a fire extinguisher right here to the right of the door. And then uh, right up above, your slide out over there. I'm going to move your slide out out. So this is a, a Schwintech slide. It pulls it in all four corners evenly. It's pretty cool. So it's going to move out all together, not just on the bottom, but in all four corners. And right up above there is the smoke detector. And then uh, that window that it's facing is your emergency exit window with the red handle on it. That's your emergency exit window. So I'm going to bring you back over here to the fuse box and a breaker box or breaker panel. So it's, it's your converter. But so 110 breakers. If you have a 110 issue, microwave, uh, refrigerator, something like that, or your outlets, TV, everything in here basically runs on 12 volt. Your furnace, your hot water tank, your refrigerator, um, your lights. 80% of it runs on 12 volt, so your fuses over here are for that. Um, it's got red indicator lights next to each fuse, so if it blows through this little window here, you'll see a red light that'll come on, indicating that that fuse blew. So it's kind of a nice little system that they give you. We'll 
go over here to your uh, like your stove or your burners. I like this one. This is Magic Chefs. Um, so in the one position, you get a little light on your. So you go up one, you get this little LED light. Center zero two position, you get an oven light. So it's kind of cool. And then to light your burners, you'll just turn it to light or high in this case, and then hit your lighter or igniter. Okay. Now what I like about Magic Chef is that they also do it for the oven. So what you're going to want to do is take it to the flame, push in, all it takes is one turn, your pile of light will come on, once you got your pile, wait a couple seconds, and then you can go ahead and turn it up. Okay, now you can take it back to the pilot, I don't recommend that you do, but you can, it does have a pilot position on the knob but it's not hard to light every time. You've seen I just did it, right? So you can shut it off, and then if you want to make cookies or whatever, make a chicken, you can do that. Oh, you know what, let's do, we'll do the thermostat. So the thermostat's right here, I have it on 90, just cranking out the furnace, but heat is gonna be your furnace um, off, and then your air conditioner is gonna be cool. But remember, your furnace blows from the bottom and your air conditioner blows from the top. All right? This is that uh, Go Power I was talking about for the uh, solar panel that on the front. So you can buy this system if you want. The screen would go here. It's already pre-wired for it and cut out for it right there. So really convenient. Uh, bathroom. You always want to make sure you put some water in the bowl. You can always, I don't want to let the antifreeze go down because when you winterize it, you want to leave some pink on that seal, keeping it hydrated or moist. Um, but if you hold the pedal at half mass, it fills the toilet full of water so, so you can use it properly. Access panel to the left. I got a, your bed flipped up right now, but that white access panel gains you access to the back of your hot water tank. Remember that panel I showed you on your front storage? This would be the other side of that. Okay, and then you got this these shocks on either side that hold your uh, mattress up. Got this little handle on here to drop your bed down. Um, it's got a little charging center on the left side there for a USB and for uh, like a lighter. Um, this coach is really cool. It's got a lot of fancy 